So let us talk about uh, cluster computing today. In this, we are going to see the introduction, the cluster categorization, the clustered component. How does this cluster work and what are the architectures, the benefits, the features of clusters and then uh, the applications and some limitations and we will conclude this. So cluster is a widely used term meaning independently computers combined into a unified system through software and networking. So the essential part is that we have independent computers, different different computers and they are combined. They are working together in a single firm, uh, maybe through some software and a uh, bit of work networking. And clusters are typically used for this high availability, HA, for greater reliability or high performance computing, HPC. So HA and HPC I'll be going to uh, talk about uh, often in this presentation and to provide a greater computational power than a single computer can provide. So HA and HPC are the two forces for this cluster computing. And the clusters are composed of many commodity computers uh, linked together by a high speed dedicated network. So they are there are various systems combined together in certain form to make a cluster and to provide a power which is more than single combined. There are various categorization of clusters like high availability clusters HA, load balancing clusters, the high performance clusters HVC and the grid cluster. So high availability, what is this? This is actually failover clusters means high availability always available it has to be highly available so these clusters are designed to provide uninterrupted availability of data or services to the end user community so if a node fails the services can be restored without affecting the availability of the service provided by the cluster and while the application will still be available there will be a performance drop due to the missing node so purpose of these characteristics clusters is to ensure that a single instance of an application is only ever running on one cluster member at a time but if and when that cluster member is no longer available the application will fail over to another cluster member this is how the availability is achieved then uh, we have this high availability cluster uh, picture for you these are for example email servers and you have load balancing this is primary and then load balancing which is the backup also so you have to have a backup so that the primary if it somehow something fails this backup can be employed so high availability cluster implementations are best for mission critical applications mission critical applications or database mail file and print web or application server so nowadays if a is a you know a website or or application it goes down for of for even a fraction of a second then the business will be taken over by somebody else this is very important so file server this providing access to file and cluster storage it failovers and now the file server is providing access to the file on cluster storage is uh, is up so this is a down this goes up so this is the cluster storage and these are shared bus or so, say so ice kazi connection so one or more uh, networks connection nodes administrator and clients are there for example these are the administrators and the client and this is how the cluster formation for high availability is being seen now, load balancing cluster, this type of cluster that distributes incoming requests for resources or content. Essentially, for resources and content, only the requests come. And this content among multiple nodes, it sends this uh, request. Uh, the same programs are having the same content. This is being distributed, the requests are being distributed, and both the high availability and load balancing cluster technologies can be combined to increase the reliability, the reliability and the scalability of the application and data resources that are widely deployed by web, 
may lose on FTP services. So every node in the cluster is able to handle requests for the same content or application. So this type of distribution is typically seen in a web hosting environment. When you require a load balancing cluster. This is how it is seen. You have a load balancer. See, this is instance 1, instance 2, instance 3. So wherever the input or request come, it sends to the balancing act. It starts the balancing, balancing act and sends to a different, different, whichever is free. This is how load balancing is done. We have active load balancer. This is server 1, server 2, server 3, server 4. These are the client requests and whichever this is actually uh, responsible for uh, diverting the request to whichever server is free. We also have parallel or distributed processing clusters and this parallel processing are performed by multiple processors in a specially designed parallel computer. You have to have a parallel computer. So these are systems in which multiple processors share a single memory and bus interface without a single within a single uh, computer. So you have a shared memory and bus interface in, this, in the computer. So these are specifically designed parallel computers. These types of clusters increase the availability of course, the performance and the scalability for applications, particularly uh, when the task is computationally or data intensive. These are the cluster component, the, these are the basic building blocks of clusters, uh, cluster nodes, cluster network and cluster network characterization. So you have these nodes, you have the switch, so this is how this cluster component can be divided, let's see this will see. So actually how does it work, a user actually submits a job to the node, head node, the job identifies uh, the application to run on the cluster, the shop, this scheduler or job scheduler on the head node assigns each task defined by the job to a node and then starts each application instance on the side node. So the results for each of the application instances are returned to the client via files or databases. This is a typical raw cluster layout, ROX cluster layout. We have this front end node, the other networks, networks card, network interface card and ICs. This is a public network. So you have a switch, the immediate nodes. So this is how a basic, uh, typical rocks cluster layout is seen. This is the architecture of cluster. Uh, cluster is a type of parallel or distributed processing system that consists of a collection of interconnected standalone computers working together as a single integrated programming resource. As I mentioned in the you know first slide that. This is the actual definition. So we have this cluster middleware. We have these are PC workstations, um, you know, commercial software, networking interface. We have high-speed network of switches. These are the parallel applications. These are parallel programming environments, and these are sequential applications. Now, this cluster computing features uh, it involves uh, network technologies, network types, communication protocols, so OS. SSI, single system interface, and QR. So cluster benefits include the main benefit is availability, then comes performance, and then the scalability. So these benefits map to the need of today's enterprise business, uh, education, military, and scientific community infrastructure. These are I'm naming just a few. And this is an important aspect as far as it, as far as computation is concerned. And we have, uh, you know, primary categories of application, which where uh, this clustering can be employed. For example, you have compute computation intensive applications or data input output intensive application and transaction intensive application. For all these, you have to go to this cluster application or cluster uh, computing. But there are certain limitations also. Typically, latency is very high and bandwidth is relatively low. So currently, there is very little uh, software support for creating a cluster as a single system. The problem still exists in the interaction between mixed application workloads on a single time shared computer. And if we compare this uh, cluster with others like grid and point-to-point, -point, 
So this uh, resource management is centralized in cluster while in others it is distributed. Resource ownership is singular in cluster. It is often logged uh, to a single node to prevent data corruption. While in grid, it is singular or multiple, very strong platform to platform, while point to point it is single, multiple distributed depending on the circumstances of architecture. While uh, in method of resource allocation or scheduling, cluster is centralized, grid is decentralized, and there is in P2P there is no single permanent host for centralized data or resource management, everything is transient. External representation in cluster is single image. In grid single or multiple image and is point to point unknown. Even it is circumstantial. Interoperability is guaranteed with the cluster, while grid in this interoperability is enforced within a framework and point to point is multiple competing standards. The suggested equipment of cluster is mostly high end, high capability systems, grid high end or commodity systems while point to point any type including wireless devices and embedded systems. In scaling, we have, you know, the scaling is very high as a number I have, I'm just uh, uh, showing you and this grid to do thousand units uh, connection while in point to point it is infinite. Uh, the discovery mechanism of cluster is defined membership which can be static or dynamic while in the grid it has to be a centralized index as well as multiple decentralized mechanism while in point to point all the same decentralized discovery mechanism so in conclusion i would like to say that uh, cluster computing has become a major part of many research programs because the price to performance ratio of community clusters is very good and also because the node and the cluster are clones there is no single point of failure which enhances the reliability to the clusters. Thank you so much. Take care.